You're listening to Curdle Holler, Dead Reckoning, Part 1. Okay, Fibby. Where is Pier 13, Curdle Holler? Pier is runway for the stinky boat and old man's fishing baby. Yes, but where is Pier 13? Oh, you are there, baby. Look with your eyes to see. Oh my god, it's right there, baby. I see the river, the old theater, some land sharks. Over here, Nita! You're gonna miss the boat! Oh, never mind. Thanks, Fabula. I found it. Hey, Chip! Help me with these bags. Ooh, look at everyone going on the cruise, Chip. Hey, Pastor Munch. Looking good, Sea Monster. Hey, Mrs. Weaver. Oh, hello, Madam Caretaker. I love the stripes and oversized sunglasses. Very shriek. Thanks. I opened my closet this morning and they were just there. That almost never happens. Ridiculous. Come on, Chip. You have to actually get in line. How long do you think we're going to be at sea, woman? Do you really need all this dunnage? This what? Dunnage is what you call personal luggage when you're at sea. As in, you packed all your dumb makeup that won't even help, and now you have too much dunnage. I'm experiencing dunnage right now. Make way! Do not touch the machine! It's dump property! Well, there he is, Chip. Ronnie B. Roach. You may look, but do not touch the claw! I can't believe Ronnie's going to let us use the salvage claw. I feel honored. I say it don't touch. Well, it's only fair since we're going to show him exactly where to dig. It's at this shipwreck right here off Port Poltergeist. See? Rochester circled it and wrote don't get distracted like five times. And there's a little thing here on the map about it. It says, site of the SS Cummerbund. A mermaid party boat which sunk in Alt-24 when the captain insisted all big rocks were merely an illusion. And now all their weird wizard stuff is just sitting there at the bottom of the ocean, ripe for the pickings. Yeah, we need all that junk to restock the boutique, which is looking a little threadbare after all the recent blob burgling and power drains to save the town. Yeah, duh. I was there when Roddy explained everything mostly to me. And remember, we want a good mix of merchandise from the shipwreck. Yeah, so we need scary, cute scary, and, and grim, grim and, and gross. gross. Right. Roddy wants all antiquities, novelties, waterproof spell books, orbs, bottled familiars, carnivorous treasure chests, and especially any padlocked coffins or crates. But if we find a box of those sticky wall crawlers, those are for Chip clearly. That's what the Cummerbund would have wanted. I believe you believe that. Hey, y'all remember our deal? I get all metal and mattresses. We, yeah, we know, know we're Ronnie? good. Well, say it again so I feel better. Okay, Ronnie, last time you'll get all metal and mattresses, okay? No take backs. Okay then. That is what we agree. When is this boat supposed to get here? Come on, boat. Come on, boat. Come on, boat. I think you mean the SS Arcade, a 200-foot, six-deck Colonel Cadaver cruise liner with casino, beauty parlor, uh, and assorted poolside activities. Okay, and why did we need a cruise boat to salvage a shipwreck? Roddy had a Groupon. Okay, well, after we're done hauling up several tons of cursed artifacts, I hope we at least have a little time to relax. Because between whatever we have going on at Vexco Labs and Halloween coming up real fast, which don't even ask me how that's possible, I need some space, you know? A little me time. There he is. Hey, Sheriff, give me some skin. Hey, 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 hey you hear that, caretaker? Chip always talking about give him some skin on account of I ain't got none. Hey, it gives me every time. Hey, Sheriff. <laughs> y'all decide about this buffet? Yes. Now, just so y'all know. I already asked Miss Weaver and Pumpkin and Terry with the plus two to eat with us every meal, so you ain't got to worry about no good company now, no sir. Every one of them long three days at sea, we gonna be inseparable. Just the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, just, just the eight of us. Just the eight of us. Pumpkin, come on over here. 
What you got on, buddy? Somebody gotta fill up my inner tube, please. Well, now I'll help you, but have you done put your mouth on the old blow There she is! Here they come. Madam caretaker, before you leave, we must have your signature on this year's Halloween parade routes. Okay. Hey, Count Fangula, Belfry. You sure you don't want me to run things while you're gone? I've done it before, you know. Yeah, thanks, Belfry, but Albert Ghost will be keeping an eye on the town while I'm gone. And Fred here will be your direct supervisor. A wise decision, Madam Caretaker. You can ask Buddy and Susan to help around the store, because they basically live there now, but keep them away from the swords. And you can handle that however you want, for I will be at sea. Now you behave while we gone, Belfry. I'd stay and watch you myself, but I got to protect the caretaker. But you really don't. And I need a vacation from my kids, okay? Very badly, so don't mess this up for me, and don't you be, you know, telling something like, no, the bones, you stay behind, or, you know. There's the ship! Now boarding the SS Arcade, a Colonel Cadaver's venture. Oh, everybody! Get your stuff, everybody! Bags again. Bonita, Chip, I wish you good luck in plundering your watery grave. Thank Thanks, you, Fred. Fred. Yeah, y'all enjoy. Uh, hey, Bonita, what if it's some witches selling them rocket brooms again in the town square? They need insurance. And what if the paintings begin to stare at us again in the hallways? Let them watch TV. What if it's graveyard golf on all weekend because it's the Grave Masters? Ah, my God, that's right, the Masters! Say they're on for a literal eternity. The paintings will go, Joe. I don't know. Uh, bye! I saw you make me to stop by. It's going to have your movies on the cancel public comment. Go on! Y'all in Cattle Holler. Cattle Holler, Cattle Holler. This is the poop deck. You've been waiting your whole life for this moment. <laughs> Hold on now. That's the real name, Chip. That's what they call it. <laughs> That's, hey, what, what'd they do up here, I wonder? What, was that what you was thinking, caretaker? Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, I, I just think of a serious question now. Uh, are, are we taking questions now? Yes. Is there a privy on this ship or, we, you know, we just figure something out? Yes, there's a bathroom on this ship. I have to believe that. Arg! If nature calls, do be holding my hand, and I will escort ye to the head parentheses bathroom. Okay, thanks, sailor bot. What are those? Colonel Cadaver's marinara mariners are called rusties, because even the threat of oxidation can't keep them away from sea. Now for some ship history. Do I need to learn about ship history? Can I just ride on the boat? Built in the year Alt-50, uh... the SS Arcade is a square-rigged, two-masted merchant vessel with auxiliary steam power, also known as a steam brig. That's what I was gonna say. Steam brick. 
Each mast is four graveyards tall. That's the same length as 4,000 mozzarella sticks laid end to end. Pfft, no it ain't. Let's Certainly. wrap it on up. Great, uh-uh. Oh, now here we go. There's some cannons on this ship. Man, I reckon old Colonel Cadavers must have laid down the law with these bad boys. A poom, 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 poom. Apparently, in Alt 52, the Colonel used his quarter pounder cannons with cheese to lay siege on Anchovy Bay and. <laughs> yeah, this part seems made up. Redeem 12 tokens to fire cannon. Sounds relaxing. Chip, how long till we disembark so I can lay out? I mean, find items for the store. Won't be long. Port Poltergeist is our first destination. Oh, says there's gonna be a Screech Boys cover band. Cool. Hey, Pastor Munch. It's Benita with some boat business to discuss. Coming. Just give me one second to find my other flip flop. Oh, dear me. Hey, Gablena. Bonita with some boat business. Hey, caretaking lady. Whoa, Gablena, you were just right there at the door, huh? Yeah, I was fixing to go have a cocktail up at the casino on account of us being on this fancy cruise and all. I'm guessing by a cocktail, you mean this jug of fog machine water, and by the casino, you mean the one slot machine and whack a worm game? Yeah, look. I got a souvenir cup with a light up straw. The whole thing go around your neck on a strap. <laughs> look. Very fancy, yeah. Sorry that took so long, Bonita. I see you found your flip-flop. Peaches was chewing on it. Sorry to hear that. Anyway, guys, Chip asked me to show you how to do your daily boat chore. It's very easy. I mean, once you get over how weird the whole premise is. Get over what and the what now? Sorry, don't worry about it. Anyway, because your two rooms are right next to the coal room, all you have to do is every morning fill up one of these buckets with coal and then dump the coal down the chute. It'll go to the furnace room. Coal down the chute. No problem. Okay, Bonita, no problem. I, I can do that. It, it's just, uh... Preacher, you look about as white as a ghost. You gonna pass out? No, I'm fine. It, it's just, uh, rocks and a furnace and a bucket and such. It all makes me so nervous. It puts me to mind of unpleasant memories. Don't y'all remember working in the mines? Oh, right. Uh, no, actually, we didn't ever work in the mines. Yeah, we was about the only ones who didn't, wasn't we? <laughs> anyway, Pastor Munch, we don't want you to be upset. This boat ride is already weird, but it's supposed to be fun, I think. Mostly. We'll just put you down for a different chore. Yeah, preacher. I can do two up on coal buckets. Not a problem. Oh, well, thank y'all. I'm relieved. You know I was thinking, maybe instead of coal bucket, I could be the ship parson and do all my pastor duties here on the boat, like marrying people at sea. Uh, okay, well, that's a great idea, Pastor Munch. Really, love it. But just, I'm not sure that many people are going to be getting married on this ship. Probably not anybody, actually. Not even you and Chip? Nope, especially not me and Chip. All right, well, y'all know I would never shirk my duties. So maybe I can just find somebody who wants to get married and that can be my chore, like I said. Okay, sounds good. You think it's so long, what have you? Oh, hey, Foreman. Toot toot, he says. I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> Don't have to get me a refill on this fog tail. Well, I come with you. I'm gonna go work on my suntan and look for happy couples. Is that you? What are you doing here in the ship spa? Are you here to be pampered? Well, not really. Well, would you look at this place? So lovely and full of hairstyles and chemicals. What are you doing here, Miss Weaver? The Weaving Circle is having a girl's day of pampering. 
I'm getting a manicure, Tarantula's getting a massage, and Bernice and Mrs. Huntsman are doing scopuli masks. Come join us, Pastor Munch. They do wrinkle embalming here. Well, it's not wrinkles I'm worried about. Let me take off my caftan and show y'all. Oh, oh my goodness! What? Pastor Munch, you ran us a Roma tomato. Excuse me, spa captain. We need some help. Oh, what was her name again? She had such an air of officiousness. Incompetence. Octavia, you got a live one here. I'm coming. I just went to go fetch some hot towels. Miss Octavia, we've got a dermatological emergency here. Pastor Munch is fried like a calamari. Well, it's probably rude to say that in front of a sea-dwelling octogal like yourself. Ah, Weaver, way to put eight feet in your mouth. I've got this, Miss Weaver. Don't y'all ladies worry one bit about this pitiful preacher. Miss Octavia, wise woman of the spa, I beseech thee, help me. I went up top to do some sunbathing, but it turns out all I did was sunburning. Hun, with skin as pallid as yours, and I'm talking mortician white, you look like negative six plus on the skin tone chart. You should have known better than to go outside without a big old gloopy pile of sunscreen all over you, which you also should have been reapplying every 35 to 40 minutes and more frequently than that if you're in the pool. So here, you put this on next time you go sunbathing, okay? This is SPF 10K. But for now, I'm going to apply this soothing sea witch balm. It's going to repair that skin barrier, okay? Oh, my skin feels good as new. I thank you kindly, Miss Octavia. Clearly, the Grand Supreme has blessed your eight tentacles with great talent. You look like a movie star with that gorgeous skin now, Pastor Munch. Octavia, I'm impressed. You've got to tell me your secrets. No secret, just training. I'm a cosmetician, estimagician, hair and makeup artist, and level 13 claw and talon tech. I'm also a former Quintuple Ruby Tear associate at Bloody Mary Kay Cosmetics. That's 45 zaps, sir. And here's a generous tip for you, Miss Octavia. Ta-ta. Thank you, doll. Now y'all just keep an ear out for somebody who might want to get married, all right? It's my book chore. Okay now, Pastor Munch, we don't know what in the world you mean by that. Okay. I'm just so impressed with your knowledge of beauty and skincare, Octavia. What's this license you've got hanging by the cash register? Certified Gold Triton holder from the Sea Spa Association. Ooh, Gold Triton! Sea Spa Association? I bet the standards are rigorous. More than rigorous. The Sea Spa Association standards are exacting. They're why I'm so good at what I do, darling. Welcome to the ship spa. Are you here for your fortifying seaweed wrap, Mr. Sea Monster? I don't have an appointment. I know you don't have an appointment, darling. I can just look at your green slime skin and assess and just know what you need, okay? So why don't you go on back there with Sean Teffler? Right this way, sir. You're killing me, Octavia. I would love to pick your brains about your profession. I've never seen someone so knowledgeable. Will you let me buy you lunch? Bring me a bucket of crabs, darling, and we will talk. Good morning, SS Arcade. We have arrived in beautiful Port Poltergeist and are cleared to disembark the vessel. The gangway will descend at 5.30 p.m. local time. Have a pizza-perfect excursion day. Come on, rope drop. We're going to have us an island adventure. Ain't that right, Foreman? Island time. What all they got here? Ooh, look, they got bumper boats. I'm going to race y'all to the boardwalk. Bumblebots! On your monkey set, I'm already going, though. Hey, man, you can't call a race. You didn't even say go, Daddy-O. <laughs> I'm winning. Uh, Marco, he did not just say he's winning. Don't hog all the bumper boats. Oh, cool. I'm going to get my name on an airbrush T-shirt, yo. Yeah, suck it to me. Not if I get there first, party monster. Race ya! Look at him running. I'm winning! <laughs> Nita, are you sure you don't want to go off on an island excursion here at Scenic Port Poltergeist? 
I hear the whole town is inhabited by people who kind of look like frogs and are descended from the sea gods. And there's a gastro pub with a locally famous bug stew. That all sounds very appealing, but I think I'm interested in seeing if we can extract any treasure from the sea with this big weird claw machine. Where's Ronnie, by the way? Doesn't he want to supervise us while we use his giant magic claw thing? Ronnie went to the beach to do some metal detecting. He said he'd trust us completely with his precious salvage claw. That doesn't sound like something Ronnie Roach would say. Okay, well, maybe it was more along the lines of he was too nervous to watch us use the salvage claw because he really loves that salvage claw, so he was going to go do some metal detecting on the beach to take his mind off our inevitably reckless use of the salvage claw. You know I like to put a positive spin on things. Yeah, Chip, so please put a positive spin on the situation right now and tell me that we do not have to drag this claw machine very far up this long, rocky coastline because I am not in much of a dragging mood right now. According to this map, the wreck of the SS Cummerbund is just about mm, half a mile up the coastline. Just half a mile of dragging! Uh... Nita, if you're not in the mood to help drag a very heavy salvage claw up the beach, dodging attacks from wayward seagulls and giant crab uh... pincers the whole way, I can get the sheriff to help. Well, actually, he told me that he was going up to the tourist area to see if he could find a bathroom with lots of elbow room, I believe is how he put it. Don't know why he chose to share that info with me, of all people, but I think it's just you, me, and the claw machine for now. I think we've got something, Nita! How do we know it's not just another turtle? The ping! Listen! The tips of the claw are an alloy of neodymium and fright crystal, arrayed into a handsome and convenient lobster clasp that activates when magical items are near. I just know we've put something! Help me pull! Yeah. Ooh, what is it? It's... Let me just get this seaweed off of it. A, a scrying, scrying orb. orb! Yes! Look at that dragon coiled around the base. This is definitely some top-notch wizard junk. Or at least it will be when we clean all the gunk off of it. That's not gunk, Nita. It's a patina. Ooh, I like that, Chip. Cha-ching. Ooh, let's send a picture to Rochester. We've got to get him hyped up about all the treasure we're going to bring back to the boutique. Okay, I'll text Roddy. You set up our next treasure dip. Woohoo! Yeah! Team boutique. We plundered it good. Thanks, seas, Mermages. Baby. What other stuff you got down there? This thing's a beeping now. You know what that means, buddy? Scrap metal. A fast ye, Sir Ronnie Roach. Mayhaps you would care for a rollicking pirate tune whilst ye dig for treasure. That's fine. Blow the man down, matey. Blow the man down. Take ye his pizza tokens and his crown. Now don't get too close, Rusty. You messing up my detecting. It's liable to start detecting you. See now? It's beeping up a storm. Back up now, fella. Blow the man down, the deep. Blow the man down. Aha! Uh -huh. I knew that was a true detection. Because you're detecting with Ronnie B. Roach. Now, let me see what I got here. Got travel here in my belt loop. Let me dig it on up. Well, all right now. That's what I'm talking about. I found an iron bolt. Hey, Rusty. Wheel on back over here. I'm going to stick this here iron bolt on you so I don't lose it. Ahoy, Ronnie Roach, coming about with a quickness. Yeah, that's a good bolt. It's good treasure. The only thing better than finding bolts and such would be finding a mattress. But we got time. A mask ye, Sir Ronnie Roach. Mayhaps ye would care for a rollicking pirate soon whilst ye dig for treasure. All right. Hold up now. I think we detected some more treasure. A legendary mound of scrap metal. Rusty, get over here and help me dig. Yeah, use the claw. Stand back now. You're too close to my treasure. Wow, Ronnie. 
I think that's a real pirate sword. Whoa! I claim it! I claim it in the name of the dump! We had a deal! I know, Ronnie. I'm happy for you. Jeez. Yeah, congratulations, Ronnie. She's a beaut. A pirate ghost! Ah, you've summoned Bloody Bones, Bill. Which means you found me, Magic Cutlass, and unleashed the curse. What sword? I ain't seen no sword. Uh, you said cursed? Ah, you hear well enough. You see the sword commits you to. Hey, you know what? Don't even worry about it. We're here to relax. We'll give you the sword and we don't even need to know about the curse. No, it's finders keepers. Benita, that is Junkman's law. Ah, it's true. The sword's his by rights. I know it is. And the curse is made. Now, do you want to hear about your own personal curse that you've been accursed with? Uh, yeah, sure. Feels Land like you us. really want to tell us. You, poor souls, must find it in your sorry selves to help me defeat the ghost ship belonging to none other than Bare Bones Bob. Or else you'll be doomed to join his cursed crew. And, uh, who are you again? I'm Bloody Bones Bill. I got blood round my bones. That's easy enough. Yeah, sure. Now... What happens if we don't participate in the stupid curse? Well, it's not stupid. Like, but... I might just go back to the resort, because I'm supposed to be laying out right now. Oh, look, Ronnie's gone. He'll reappear after a while, as that's part of the curse. For you see, when you ignore the deal, you're also cursed to wander this beach with me for a million D and thirty-five long years, frowning and growing more raggedy all the time. It's smelling a fish, too. And there's no washing machines in case you do be wandering. Sheriff, come here. We're learning about Nita's future. Hey, Chip, Anita, Bill. I've been listening. I'm caught up. Y'all cursed. You're all cursed. Yeah. Oh, here we go. You'll be doomed to join my cursed crew. Oh, right. Now we got a skeleton pirate. So that makes you Bare Bones Bob? Pleased to meet ya. Ooh, hey. nice bow. Yar, yar, yar. I think that's called making a leg. Hey, 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 let's make a leg back. Like this here, Chip. Look at this. Uh, <laughs> Don't ye be making a leg to Bare Bones Bob. Why, he's no more than a louse on Triton's beard. And a lout besides. What I would know on account of our feud what's lasted nigh on ten centuries. Now go back to your sorry sloop, Bob. I'm explaining the curse. Yar, but you tell it all wrong. I tells it fine, Bob. You never says what awaits them on me own terrible ship. The Calcium Chew. Fail to best me in battle, and you turn to skeletons your own selves. Bound to my infernal vessel, where you'll spend all your days climbing perilous masts in raging storms, cleaning cannon while they're still a shooting, and swabbing decks where I do be spitting up all manner of vile specimens. Okay, bud, you, you're talking to a skeleton, don't know if you noticed, uh, you telling me, a skeleton, gonna be on this here skeleton crew, a skeletons? Aye, you'll have twice the bones and twice the duties. I ain't doing that. You'll, you'll have, have no, no choice. choice. Jinx, fool of the sea. Concern it, I curse me own self for thinking the same thoughts as a low-down scrub of a scallywag bone dog. Yar, Bill, you can't win. Especially with this sorry crew, a cowboy constable. What well, no, I be dog song? Wounded mummy. Huh? Yar, and a seaside floozy. Oh, that's just... Yar, they probably come from a town that's not even scary. And probably no teamwork, neither. What? I have you not? No, 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 no way. Uh, Nar, this bunch is different, Bob. They've got a ship what's rife with cannon, mines for adventure, and stout arms like on this here burly lass. Hey, What's that? I can't hear you. I'm fading away. But you can. You can hear me, Bob. Apparition. I'm fading away to me own ship. He hears every word, and don't you believe any different? Now, muster your crew, and let's see what we're a working with. Ghost pirate at home, pretty sure. 
Arr, do we finally have everyone? Yeah, mostly. The ones with good attention spans, anyway. We're rounding up the rest. Nice to meet you, bloody bones. Or do you go by Bill? Bill, I'm gonna call you Triple B. Hope that's okay. Arr. Uh, Triple B? Now, why don't y'all ever call me by my initials? You know, B.M.? Oh, no, no, I see. I, I see why. Never mind. So then, these be the swarthy, slimy sailors. What's gonna help me sink Bare Bones Bob and the Calcium Chew? Well, we do hate Bob, especially after that no teamwork comment, but... Uh... Would it concern you to hear we have limited pirate experience? I'm a fat baloney, Bob. Only I can't swim. Neither can I, you great ruddy orange pearl. Real sailors wear swimmies. Oh, well, that's good for me. Look, I've had centuries of practice waging war. I've seen your strange smoke ship, your heavy cannon, your iron sailors. This man has a sword. Oh, yeah. I don't know what creatures most of you be, but I like your look, and I know you can do it. Just get your fannies on that ship, follow my lead, and I'll take you on a high seas adventure of glory and... Adventure and remove the curse besides. Okay. I do hate curses. I'm ready, sir. My name is Terry. Aye, Mr. Terry. You'll be first mate. Good job, Terry. Getting in promotions. Aye, you'll all have jobs on the arcade. A strong name befitting the boat. What's finally gonna blow up? Bare Bones Bob. Ah, time to shove off. Oh boy. Okay, Foreman, listen to this, man. This is what this is. There's gonna be an old man in this lot. Well, Miss Octavia, the dining room is awfully crowded at the moment, but I think we can grab some seats at this table if you're all right with that. That's fine, Ms. Weaver. Let me just go fill up my plankton tea and I'll be right over. So goes my prophecy. Goblinna, do you and Mr. Foreman mind if a couple of successful and ambitious role model types share your table for the meal? Oh yeah, pull you up a chair. Now, I apologize in advance if I start talking crazy at you. I've had a lot of this fog machine cocktail. <laughs> no worries, Gablina. You're on a cruise. You're letting loose. Oh, I love the souvenir cup. Very cute. Well, you ought to get you one. But be careful if you do, because this stuff packs a punch. <laughs> Lord, the line at the drink station was like something out of a zombie apocalypse. But I'm ready to eat now. Let me just unpack my silverware. I bring my own utensils everywhere. See, Octavia, now that's just the level of detail and exactitude I admire about you. I'm gonna get right to it. I just love everything you've got going on, and I want to get in on it. I need a new challenge in my retirement. A spider can only weave so many doilies before she goes cuckoo, you know. So, you're interested in becoming a cosmetician? Exactly! And of course, I'd want to be a very excellent one. So, you not only wish to become a cosmetician, but you wish to be certified by the Sea Spa Association? I could certify you, if you prove capable. Well, I thought I'd give it a whirl. After all, I could hold several brushes and the hand mirror at the same time. It's an asset to have eight hands. Oh, no. Eight hands is expected. I see many futures! Okay, Goblina, you just kicked me a little bit, honey. Whoops, sorry. Now, Ms. Weaver, do you think you have what it takes to undergo a brief yet relentless training period aboard this ship? Because I can only certify you at sea. That's one of the rules. I've always been a very hard worker. And are you prepared to abide by all the edicts of the Sea Spa Association? Because they are quite unfair. I'm not one to complain when I don't get my way. I'm tough as acrylic nails. And if you fail the exam, are you prepared to be exiled to a remote island for a 15-year period of sea shame? Exiled to an island? Could I throw a luau? No. Oh my, the near impossible standards somehow make me even more intrigued about taking on this challenge. Hey, sorry to interrupt y'all, but I got a prophecy of the sea. 
Okay, well maybe you should take a pause on the fog juice cocktails, Gablina honey, but go ahead and tell us your prophecy. Okay, I gotta tell everybody that there's gonna be a big storm. And I gotta tell y'all that you're gonna make a bunch of heads real beautiful. So goes my prophecy. Beautiful heads? You must be referring to my prospective future satisfied clients. This seals the deal. Octavia, consider me your apprentice. I'm ready to learn and grow as a cosmetician of the Sea Spa Association. It is written, and thus it will begin. Captain's Log, tenth of gloom at the height of noon. We sail for battle on ageless waters where whales go pee pee. A strange fact which never far from me thoughts. Anyhow, sword's been found and a new crew mustered. And this time we may finally sink the boat or that landlubber skeleton would call Jinx afore I had the chance. But should we fail and sink beneath the whale pee pee water, these brave souls will join the ranks of Bob's abominable crew. Well, Casey, that's one heinous clam bake. Uh, so embarrassing. Ship spotted, sir. Ah, it's the Chew, on a collision course to be sure. Now we're talking. We are very confident right now, and I don't know why. So, uh, Miss Weaver and them down there just doing beauty stuff right now, or, uh, what they doing? Here they come. Look alive, even though you do be dead. Ooh. Somebody pull up a video about how to use swords. No, type best sword video. Here you go, Chip. We learn it together. Hardly, Mr. Terry. Feel the spray of Triton spit. Observe the tattered sails of the tub which may sink us all, but mayhap it is we who watch them taking in the drink. Mayhap, mayhap it's so. Turn your ears to the barge of the cursed. Listen how they halloo with the very thought of war. Skeletons! Which we have seen before, but these do seem mean and scrambly. Look at them all. Now, a heated shot, Mr. Pumpkin. A broadside across their bow to burn their bones. Here I go. Pew, pew, pew. I said fire, Mr. Pumpkin. Pew, pew, pew. Okay, skeleton. <laughs> yeah, give it to him, Pumpkin. What are you doing? You're only pretending to fire. Are ye mad? Well, these aren't real cannons. You know that, right? This is a cruise boat. A what? What's a cruise boat? Like for pleasure? Like an, a nice time? Yeah, yeah, most folks up there doing casino and playing red rummy and stuff. So none of you knows anything at all about running a ship or the art of naval combat? No, we said we didn't. But... The Rusties are programmed to find ports and serve pizza. Does that help? Arg, did somebody say pizza? No, no, I was gonna win this time. You mean this is real? I thought you was an actor, like this was part of the crew's experience. Me too, I thought it was like one of them stories on amusement park rides. You're like, "Uh uh-oh, some some dinosaurs got loose, but it's all right, cause the tour guide's gonna save us. I reckon that's you. Yeah, tell us what to do. Brace for impact! A cannonball? That was close to me! That's a 30-pounder speaking, you mad greenhorn devils! Yar, I'll have your surrender, Bill! It's clear to all that you barely know what you're doing. Be gone, Bob! We're merely drawing you close for the kill! Sure ya! Heads up! Them skeletons climbing like a bunch of old sea monkeys up the side of my boat! Hand out the weapons! Muskets! Sabers! Dirks! Like, we ain't got that, see, daddy o No entry without ticket! Your guardian has been notified! Have at me, bony boarders! Oh, wait, hold on! I gotta find that part of the video again! Dang! Sea skeletons is immune to slime pistol! Hey, Bill, I don't know from boats, but I think this is going very bad, yeah? We have to turn around. Aye, Mr. Terry, turn us about. 
What's that mean? The other way! That's stupid! It's all the ways on the ocean! Point us that a ways! We'll tuck tail and hide in the fog! That's our only chance! There you go! The coward's way! That's for us! All skeletons off the boat! Aye, now we play the quiet game to avoid detection. Do over! No do overs! Now deeper into the fog, Terry, and quiet as you please. Blah. lost the quiet game. Well, then you could say we're all winners. Hey, now, that's positive leadership. I nominate Chip as captain. I'll need to watch a few videos. Her captain, I'm the only captain of this ship. None of yous can hand a reef or steer a ship such as this, save for one soul, and that's this man right here, what happens to be made of iron. Are you talking about one of the Rusties? That's a robot. Do not listen, sir. You're a fine man and a sailor to your bones. Ask your parent slash guardian for more tokens. Oh, maybe later. First things first. I know we'll fix bare bones, Bob, once and for all, but I demand your full support. You, make a flag. What? You make a flag. Oh, don't think I can make a flag, do ye? I don't know. Can you? Last I'll knit the finest flag you ever did see. Good, do it. Just need me darning needle and pattern. Should be done in a fortnight. I reckon you know all there be to know about running a ship, so I'll just sit here and make a grand old flag. Needle in, yeah, needle out, needle, needle, needle. So, not that I know how to run a ship, but I have to say that old Bloody Bones Bill here was not great in a crisis. Uh, but he, he got curse experience. True. And I mean, Bare Bones Bob's ship looked real dirty. Don't mind me, the captain what knows how to run a ship. Only been doing it centuries. I'll just knit this here flag while you're thinking about joining that cursed crew. Okay, tell us what to do. Terry, learn sailing. Yes, sir. He knows what to do. Rusty, you and the other iron superstars patch the deck, worm cable, and mend sails with some great big underpants. We sail to a place called Cape Crudcliffe. What's in Cape Crudcliffe? An island, and on this here island be the shipwreck of a fearsome crew which almost bested Bob. We'll salvage the wreck for weapons, as yours be fake outs what require more tokens than you'd think. And you're sure this shipwreck is still there? Aye, it's guarded by me ex-girlfriend. Uh, sh she's a pirate? Oh, she's the meanest lass you'll ever meet. But don't you worry, I'll sweet talk us through and we'll load this brig with all the armor and cannon her timbers can hold. Somehow avoiding fighting, sea monsters, or natural disaster along the way? Aye. Bill, in these centuries of battle of which ye speak, how many times have you actually bested Bare Bones Bob? Yeah, how many times has your crew not turned into skeletons? Let's see, somewheres between one and negative two. Hey, if we don't make it back, we don't have to tell Rochester what happened. <laughs> Cabin Boys Log, SSRK. Our passage to Bloody Bones Bill's ex-girlfriend's island has been uneventful for much of the afternoon. Seas are calm, the crew has been fed pizza, and everyone is getting kind of sleepy. Pumpkin and the sheriff are practicing swordsmanship. Either that, or they're playing tag. I can't really tell. You pretend on me, I pretend on you. Chip, are you dictating that log to some device I can't see? Or are you just saying that stuff out loud? Huh. Ugh. Oh, y'all! I spy from my up tall bucket some land. It's an island, you dig. 
there might be cute boys on it. That's great, guys. Um, is it safe for all three of you to be in that lookout bucket? Casey, don't get seasick this way. Okay. Yar, we have a saying on the high seas. Three men in the crow's nest, 300 men arrive to port. We're not three men. Uh, we're two girls and a guy. It's just an expression, Bosun Casey. All ye hands on my vessel are my men. So anyway, Bill, what's this island? Why don't we just stop here and fix the boat? The boat has some... Chip, would you call those massive holes? It's got some massive holes in it, sir. And I'm no captain, yet. But if I know vehicles, I know that holes aren't good. Yar, young chipper. Will ye consult the map? We must discern what we can about this here island before we rashly pull up, lest we get yeeted out to sea by a mad monster. Well, this part of the map isn't annotated. There's some clip art music notes on it, though, if that's helpful. Is that helpful? Hey, y'all! Hey! Sea prophecy! Time for another prophecy! Somebody's gonna be singing a song, but y'all can't listen, cause it's gonna kill ya. Whoop, I'm out of fog juice. I'm going back down in the boat. Now that prophecy do ring in me ears like a cannon that's been fired too close to me skull. The Dread Sirens! Their beautiful tune maddens men and myrrh alike and drives them to a vicious death upon the teeth of a beast. No matter what we do, we cannot let ourselves listen to the siren song. Do we trust everyone on the ship to put their hands over their ears and keep them there a while? Because I'm guessing no. Us? Doing hand earmuffs without ear peeking? Never! We would succumb to the madness within moments. <laughs> oh, crap. I think I hear the beginning of the beautiful siren song. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey now, y'all. Uh, I got all these old uh, earplugs back at Poor Poltergeist. Here, take these. They was giving them out for the Screech Boys concert that we did not get to attend. Looking at you, bloody bones, Bill. Yar. Everybody pass them around now. Put them in your ears. Here, Captain, you too. No. What you need to do is hog tie me to the bowsprit so I can listen to the siren song without jeopardizing the fates of the whole lot of ye. Is that necessary, or can you just take the earplugs like everybody else is? Tie me with the quickness. Even if I go mad and beg, you can't untie me until we're past. I hear it now. Tie me up. Tie me up. Uh. Does everyone have their earplugs in? Yes. Yes. yes! Now that I'm tied up tight, I will do my best to describe to ye the beguiling poetry of the sirens. <laughs> this is so dumb. Yar, it brings a tear to me eye. Brings me back to my mama's kitchen. Cookies and cocoa. Warm sun filtering through yellow curtains what's got little chickens on them. Let's steer the boat that way. No! Yar, I'm overcome. The velvet petals of a thousand roses. The winningest dimple of a purdy lass's smile the majesty of a thousand mountains and a million sunsets of crimson and gold. I just wish you could hear what I hear. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. All right, Ms. Weaver, it's been an intense day of makeup drilling, color wheels, and skin-type topography. Now the time has come for you to begin practicing your skills on real victims, I mean clients. I am confident in my preparedness, Octavia. Now, per the bylaws of the Sea Spa Association, I will turn over the operation of the beauty parlor to you for the day. You are bound by sea law to treat all customers to my satisfaction as the certifying body, no matter who they are or what their deal is, even if it is insane. That's to be expected, Octavia. I'm ready for my first customer. <laughs> we need service. We demand beautification. Three full makeovers. We want the works. We're trying to land a man. A real big catch. Well, hello, Mandrake sisters. I'm a bit confused because I can hear you all very clearly. We're very loud. 
Yes, but I can't see you at all. Of course you can't. We used vanishing cream. And we've all vanished. <laughs> <laughs> but we still want makeovers. From our hats to our feet. 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 feet, 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 feet. <laughs> Three invisible makeovers? That's my first assignment? Well, that seems a tiny bit ridiculous, but... Is there a problem, Ms. Weaver? N no, I'm just thinking, Octavia. Okay, Weaver. How do I know what makeup to put on faces I can't see? Hmm. Okay, ladies. I'm just gonna pull up your Instagram account and take a look at your photos. We don't have Instagram. We're too big for Instagram. We're too famous. You're killing me, Mandrakes. Okay, so let me just do a Google image search. Here we go. Here's some production skills from Arlene's old movie, Hicks in the City. Ah, look at this Dracula's Bride scarlet costume they put you in. You're a true autumn, Arlene. You should be in muted warm colors. Let me just get my color palette. But what about Louise? She wasn't in any movies. I'm not photogenic. How do you pick a palette for her? Louise, I can tell from your voice that you're a bit congested, which means you're probably getting over a cold. Which means, first of all, you shouldn't have come into the spa with your cooties. Ick! Ah. But second of all, you're probably greener than usual, which means I need to apply a pink color corrector. Here I go, Louise. Now I need to do this all by feel, so don't mind my filiform hairs. Chickers. <laughs> Excellent, Ms. Weaver. Just make sure you don't slack on your gossip and chit-chat skills while you're doing this, okay, hun? Say, girls. Did you hear the ship is under a pirate curse? It's very exciting. Good, good. And what else? And Pastor Munch wants to marry a couple at sea. So y'all let me know if you can land a man once your makeovers is done. Okay, Pastor. Go back under your hairdryer. Now, Barbara, I just need to put you in some shimmering golds real quick. I remember from your old album cover, I was warty when warty wasn't cool, that you look beautiful in gold. And we're done. And now, the moment of truth. Girls, I have an atomizer spray that will reverse the vanishing cream. Why did you do that? We looked better invisible. More mysterious. Oh, don't be silly, girls. I did a wonderful job. You all look so magnificent. And you have passed the test of the unfair triple invisible makeover. Well done, Miss Weaver. A few more customers and you'll be ready to take your final exam. <laughs> you all look so captivating, I can't believe it. You're gonna lure everyone into your big bully cauldron. Your wood has so much dignity. Bullseye. Yay, you got him! Marco, do not spit on the Rusties. That is our crew. But he's so good at it. You know, Bill, I gotta admit, you made a pretty good flag for the arcade, considering you've never seen a video game before. Ah, you described it well. Now look here. This is the site of the wreck, where we'll load up on cannon and armor. We must sail through this here channel, past the Pole My Finger Arch, and we'll moor up at my girlfriend's island. X, ex ex-girlfriend. Got to remember that, for all our sakes. Terry, report. I see an old crab puffing up at me like he want to fight. What else, Terry? Pirate ship. Full sails and guns on deck. Cool. Not cool, Mr. Casey. We're not ready for the bobs. That's what I'd be calling Bear Bones and his crew if you want to start doing that. Why do you hate Bob so much anyway? What's the history there? What's there to like? He's a two-faced bony baloney. Though once he was a friend. Only I began pondering existential leviathans, whereas he liked to carry surprise Draculas to unsuspecting villages. I suppose we outgrew each other. Plus he wants that sword, and I seen it first. Maybe you secretly want to get married. No, it'd never work out. You know each other too well. Yar, I believe so. Hey, uh, what you call an ocean commode when it's backed up? That's no sea turret. That's Corruptus, the whirlpool. How we go?
gonna get out of this one. We'll tell you next time on Fog Juice Adventures, part two on a boat. Oh, we hate, you have to go, it's time.